All right, we're not talking about who the Seahawks can take at number 16 in the draft. Instead, we're talking about drafting Seahawks. These are guys uh, that Bump and I have identified as Seahawks. They have all the qualities that we are used to. Pete Carroll, now it'll be Mike McDonald, uh, and John Schneider uh, really, really liking. What kinds of qualities do Pete and John, and we'll learn what Mike uh, always seem to go for. And so I think we've learned a lot about what John likes over the last, uh, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13 years. And so these are the ones I've identified with Junior. So I'm going to go over uh, his background and and just give people like a basic overview um, of this player. And then, uh, Bump, you've been looking at some films. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Seahawk in the draft, our first choice. <laughs> Michigan linebacker Junior Colson. Junior was born in Haiti. His father died when he was young. He was placed into an orphanage. Um, an American couple visited on a church mission when he was nine and adopted him, brought him back to the States. Turns out they're all huge Michigan fans. So he plays high school football, becomes a four-star recruit. Of course, when he's eligible to declare for a university, get a scholarship, be recruited, of course he chooses Michigan because he has grown up to love the school since his family loved it so much. He has a tough, not only is there a background there, of kind of overcoming obstacles that I think John has always really liked, but he's got a toughness even in games that I can see John Schneider really identifying with as a Midwesterner at heart himself. Um, Case in point, Junior broke his hand in a win over Purdue and didn't leave the game. He continued to play a few more snaps with a broken hand and then returned in some following games to play with a cast on his hand. He led the national champs, and I hate saying that as a Husky, in tackles this year, which is notable when you're on the nation's best defense. Um, And this is also a guy who plays a position the Seahawks are desperately in need of finding depth. The two inside linebackers that they have on the squad this year are there on short-term one-year deals. They need to find a long-term answer at this position. Could Junior Colson be that guy? He is, I would say, the second or third ranked linebacker in this class, though, because it's not an exceptionally deep class for linebackers, he's widely projected to be a day two guy. Maybe he's on the board for the Seahawks. This is probably someone they can only get if they find a second round pick. I don't know that he's going to be there late in the third when they're on the board, but if they're able to trade back, if they scoop up a second rounder somewhere, he's available there for them. Let's see if they take him. You have watched some tape on Junior. What have you seen? Junior Colson, 6'2", 225 pounds. Um, his measurements are bigger than what I, I thought he, he was. I watch him on film. Maybe it's because he wears number 25. It kind of jacks you up a little bit because you naturally see the number 25, you think corner and the safety. But when I watch this young man, this isn't a knock on him neither. Um, he do, He's not a very violent player. He's not violent. You think of linebackers, you think of guys who are just going to run through a wall, I stick their linebackers. face into every tackle. That's not the way he plays. has great instincts, but he's not the guy who's going to have the hit that's going to be on Sports Center Top 10. But what he does is find himself in the right position by diagnosing plays, and he's a for sure tackler. Mm-hmm. He's strong. Almost my, my, uh, my note I wrote down, all right, so I got this. I got this homie, Greg Prater. I played ball with him at Washington State. Biggest hands I've ever seen in my life. Every time I shake his hands, I go, all right, grips. You know, just his hand, like, just makes my hand look like it's a tiny little baby hand. That's what I imagine. I don't know what his hand measurements are, but it looks like once he gets his paws on you, it is a wrap. Not a violent player, but he gets to where he's supposed to be, and he makes the tackle. Uh, other note, he plays with great control. One thing that um, that really impressed me about this young man is he's good in the gray areas. For, for a linebacker, a gray area, is okay say you are at the linebacker spot the quarterback is rolling to your right you have the quarterback has the option to run you have a running back or a tight end in the flat and then you have a route behind you you have to play in the gray area as long as you can and wait for the quarterback to make a decision before you attack multiple times i've seen this guy do that very patient that shows his patience um the knock no interceptions in his career um doesn't get a lot of sacks but he does rally to the football again a player who is doesn't play slow he plays fast mm-hmm. but not a really violent player but he doesn't have to be violent because he's a good tackler and he is smart he puts himself in position to make plays i like this kid that tackling is hugely important when it comes to stopping the run where did seattle's defense struggle so badly last year and the year before bump yeah stopping the run mm-hmm. and while we're looking at the defensive line as really kind of being the guys to take on 
the the bulk of that and really improve there. The linebackers are obviously a huge part of that. Um, and he has received the most praise for being a really dominant run stopper. It doesn't always mean that that's what he does. It doesn't always mean that, you know, that makes him the best. Again, this guy's projected to be a day two pick, not, right. not a top 10, not a day one pick. Um, but that is an area where he excels uh, compared to his peers. And it's an area where Seattle badly needs help. And it's an area where you bring in a defensive guru like Mike McDonald. Maybe he looks at a really good run stopping inside line backer and thinks I can work with this I'm very intrigued by this I read a mock that had him to the Cowboys uh, between uh, Cowboys have 58 and 87 so they mocked him like at either of those two picks so let's say like a late second rounder or whatever again when you get into round two three uh, and then day three of the draft for uh, rounds four through seven you're going to have guys that you bring on with question marks. I'm sure that after watching a decade of great linebacker play from KJ Wright and Bobby Wagner, when Bump said he's not an especially violent player, a lot of you thought, I don't want him. Mm -hmm. But I think there are plenty of other qualities that when we talk about what makes someone a Seahawk, he has. Again, overcoming adversity, playing through really hard injury, putting football first, being really, really good against the run. Those are things I can see this team, this coaching staff, and John Schneider valuing. Yeah, you got to value that. In, on every team, I guarantee you when they're talking about their defense, especially they're talking about the linebackers, you got to be able to tackle. Uh, you have to be able to um, drop into coverage. You don't have to be the greatest in coverage because um, your body won't necessarily allow you to do that just because you're built differently. This kid is 6'2", 225. Um, and you have to have this, um, this willingness to be coached mm -hmm. and a willingness to to uh, communicate. And that's another thing I keep hearing about this young man is that he is a great communicator pre-snap. That tells me he is a smart football player. Defense is all about fits. Every gap has to be accounted for. Someone has to have the edge. You got to have guys shooting the alley. On the back end, you have to be disciplined. When you are a linebacker in that box, if you do not do your job, if you do not shoot your gap, you do not set the edge, you compromise someone else's job, and then they try to make up for you, and it's a domino effect, and now your, your defense looks like they don't know what they're doing. I think at times we saw that last year because guys just weren't disciplined in doing their job. Sometimes that means taking an L. Sometimes that means, look, I'm setting this edge. I'm shooting this gap. I'm going to get dominated. But you know what? This gap is accounted for. Now my guys can go run around and make some plays. So I, at a linebacker, at the linebacker spot, that's one thing I love seeing on film and I love hearing about mm -hmm. is that guys are great communicators. You don't communicate if you don't know what you're doing. I've never I, – when I used to line up a play against a defense and all I hear is chatter, 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 I go, all right, them boys is ready. Now, if I line up against a defense and I hear nothing or I, I, there's hesitancy out there, it does something for an offense to say, all right, these dudes ain't ready. So, yes, not a violent player, but does fly to the football, very smart, has instincts, good in the gray areas, and pre-snap, he'll make sure everybody is aligned. That tells me he's a student of the game, and you must be that in the NFL.